Guys, it's a beautiful morning on the farm and when I say beautiful, I actually do mean beautiful. I'm right here in the kraal. You can see the cattle in the background. Guys, for the first time in a really long time, we got rain last night. Yeah, that really excites me because that means these cattle are not going to suffer anymore. And then that means that the crops that we planted are actually going to grow. I was worried about the maize and the beans that we had planted and because we had no rain. Anyway, what makes it more beautiful is that last night we had a new calf delivered. Woo! A new calf delivered. Let me just show you guys. Right here, guys. Take a look, take a look, guys. You can see the calf in the background, yeah? With the mother. The mother is licking the calf. You can see. It was born just in the night. It's a brand new baby. And the mother is just trying to lick him. Now, because the ground is a bit muddy from the rain, Despite the fact that the calf has just been produced, they already look muddy, but that really excites me. And that takes the number of cattle we have on the farm to almost 140. Yay! So guys, the calf that was delivered is actually male, and I honestly don't know what's happening. Over the past few months, I think out of like, let's say if we have given birth to 10 calves, only two have been female. Now, if you're a farmer like me, you know what that means. That's not really what you want. Because you want to grow your numbers as quickly as possible. And getting females means you have more to be able to reproduce. I honestly don't know what's happening around. I don't know why we're only getting males and males and males. This is a male. Out of the past six that have been delivered, only one has been female. Ah, quite disappointing. But it's always a nice thing to have new life around on the farm. So guys, these are dairy cattle that we have on the farm. They ain't pure breeds. No, they are not pure Frisians. They come from the Frisian line of genes, but they're also mixed with our local breeds of cows here. They're certainly not pure breeds because the pure breeds would have a problem surviving in our environment. Guys, this is Uganda. There's lots of people with cows. There's lots of people with cattle. And that means that cattle diseases could be quite rampant. You know, sassy flies and all diseases that affect cattle could be rampant. Not everyone controls those diseases. So since this area has lots of farms close by, you want to make sure that you get a breed of cows that's quite resistant. One that can provide for your needs, but also quite resistant. So every morning we milk these cows. We milk the cattle. Now not all the cattle are milked actually. Of the 140 something cattle that we have, we probably milk 20 or less of the cattle. And that's because not all of them have babies, yeah? They give birth to babies, the babies grow up. We don't milk them for too long, yeah? So we milk those that actually give us milk, because there are cattle that don't give lots of milk. Those that actually give us milk, we do get to milk them every morning. So depending on the season, during the rainy season, we'll probably have you know, 120 liters of milk every day. Currently, we are in the sunny season. Told you guys, it's been months that it hasn't rained. And what that means, if there is no rain, that means there is no grass. Uh, and what that leads to is very, very poor milk production. So recently, we've been getting about, you know, 55, 60 liters of milk a day from the, you know, maybe 15 cows that we milk every day. That's a really, really poor yield, but well, uh, not like we can do much about it. So when we get our milk, people come and buy the milk from the farm. I told you guys, when you're doing business, you want to cut down your costs as much as possible. So people have to come and pick the milk from the farm. We want to avoid taking it there because it increases on the work, it increases on the stress. So getting people to come here to pick the milk saves us all that time and money. So currently, you can see that the cows are just chilling. You can see, you know, they are standing up. Some of them are seated down, like if you see. If you look through the legs of those cattle, you can see other cows seated down. And it's around 8 a.m. We are just about to get them out, you know, to go grazing because they have to go and feed. If they don't feed, they won't give you any grass. So we are inside their kraal and guys, a kraal never looks good. This place is cleaned as often as possible. As often as possible. But as you can see, the floor is quite messy. It's really muddy because they poop in here every time. But the advantage is this poop it's actually very good manure for us. What happens is that every day, there is people, well not every day, probably every once in four or five days, someone cleans out the dung and then it's piled over in that heap. You guys see that heap over there? That's actually a heap of dung. And the reason for piling it up is that you don't want to use your manure 
once it's still acidic and fresh no it will kill your crops so once you pile it here we'll keep it in here for you know a month or two months or even up to six months and then when it gets good enough for use then we can pick it up and go and pour it in our banana plantations or any other plantation that we have that way it's perfect manure in addition to that people actually come to buy the manure because it's too much you can't use all of it so you will get people coming over with trucks to buy our manure now guys over there we have our cattle shed you guys see it's quite long probably around 90 meters in length running that entire length and in there once it rains this is where most of the cattle spend their time because they don't want to be hit by rain it gets quite cold so they'll come and sleep in here so right in here is where they spend their time the floor is made from maram you can see that compared to the outside this is actually dry and that's because the rain didn't hit the place over here we have a tap you guys can see the tap right here this is water for the cattle yeah so we have very many of such plastic cans scattered I, I think you can see another one in the background over there then we have others on the other side and that's for the water uh, for the cattle we put the water in here you need to just make sure there is water always available for the cattle because it helps for their production Guys, now that the calves have been separated, the cows are still here with a lot of the younger cows actually. And now they're going to move out to actually graze, yeah? They're going to move out to graze in the grass and then later on, at around 1 p.m., they'll actually be returned here to get their water. By the way, I didn't told you guys, we actually have salt here. Just like we do for the cows, over here we have salt and the cows come here to eat their salt. It's quite clean, it's a clean place. You guys can see a practical, yeah? This is what the salt looks like, yeah? It is sodium chloride. Uh, I don't know which other thing is present in here. I'll probably have to check it out. It might have other salts which are quite useful. But yeah, this is the salt, guys. And now the cows are going to move out to go feed. Everything is done, guys. The calves have been selected out. Apart from this mother, the one who has a very tiny baby. But the mother has to leave because if they don't leave, they won't have any milk. So they're going to leave their baby in here. But the rest of the calves have been taken to the shed just to separate them, to make sure they don't move with their mothers. So the mothers are going to go out and feed and the adults and the young guys, yeah? The, the youths, <laughs> they are all in here. So they're going to go out and feed. Then the very little ones, you guys can see, I don't know, you can't, but through the building behind there is a paddock, a small paddock. And right there is where the calves will go to feed from. They go and feed from there the entire day. They have their water from there. It's quite big, a huge number of acres, maybe around five acres for maybe 15 or 20 calves, big enough. So they'll feed from there and then later on they will return in the evening. They'll again get separated so that the mothers sleep here, the calves sleep the other side. So the calves get to breastfeed in the morning. Part of the So guys, now that the other cows have moved, we have just opened for the calves and we are going to let them move out, go into the pasture. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go guys, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Come on, come on, come on, let's go.
So right here in this paddock, you can see it in the background. This is where the calves are going to be feeding. They're just 17. I've actually just counted them. Just 17 and they have all this grass to themselves. You can see all this expansion. Too much. They could never finish it. So this is why they'll spend the day. They really don't need to go with their parents. They'll feed on the grass. They don't eat too much grass, but they'll eat a little bit of it. They do do their breast milk in the mornings after we've milked the cows you know we just take out a little milk and then leave the rest for the babies that was a brief tour if you have any questions any comments leave them in the comment section below don't forget to hit the subscribe button smash that notification bell that way you never miss out on an upload lots of love catch you very soon with another video Bye bye